Guess what, guys? I'm here with Rachel Finch. <laughs> Rachel Finch, the Rachel Finch. Stop. She's here. We, I mean, you know her. She's the mother of two. She's a fitness guru. She's a beautiful <laughs> model as well. Yeah. She's a fashion icon. She's everything. A proud wife. A proud, of course, <laughs> and a proud wife. Can't forget that. I'm really, really well. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We've got my favourite brew. Yes. Well, my favourite mid-morning brew, which is green tea. Yeah, so you have an order of how you have your tea. I just like different teas at different times of the day. I'm really, I guess, a big believer on tea drives kind of the energy and the feeling in my body. So at the start of the day, I'll have more energy boosting tea. You know, midway through the day, I might continue to have that energy boosting tea. And then towards the end of the day, when the sun's going down, I'm like, okay, let's go chamomile, peppermint, you know, licorice, I digestive. Love that. Yeah, so just so we're having, calming. So we're having green tea today. Amazing. Let me actually pour that. How today. are you going to go picking that yeah. up, Jules? It is a tiny <laughs> bit awkward and scorching hot as yeah. well. That's good. Um, so Tea's I meant to be hot. I feel like I've done that quite well, actually. I think you've actually nailed that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you've got so much going on, like yes, I mentioned. Yes, it's been full on. Your babies are so young. I've got Violet, who is four um, on Sunday, which we're uh -huh. so excited about. Yeah. And I have got Dominic, who is six and a half months. So Violet is the big sister. Yes. And it is incredible she's so warming and loving and mature against him you know like she she just is the perfect big sister she helps me get the nappy wipes and i think it's been really good because we've had the i think we've had the good um, age gap yep. so that three and a half years has been just perfect for us because mm -hmm. it's given us time to really enjoy violet yeah. and enjoy her growth and all those beautiful first experiences because she's a little bit more independent now mm -hmm. and Dominic is very dependent so we can balance the two really well and I think that three year and just in my opinion is that sweet spot so that's how you do it I've yeah. done it wrong because mine's two years oh gotcha so <laughs> yours was manic <laughs> Oh, and two boys as two, well. I can't even. Are you going to go for a number three? Or? No. No? No, no. You're happy? I'm done. done. I'm very happy. I think I've always said, um, especially to Misha, the third baby is the woman's decision, uh -huh. is the mum's decision. Yeah. Because, you know, with Violet, our birth was quite relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Then Dominic comes around, 15 hours of active labour. It was just so different. It was so contrasting to Violet's birth. Yeah a lot more exhausted and fatigue after and it was just a lot different um so recovery time was was incredible but you know what it's like yeah, it's you've got this most new feeling. soul on your yeah. chest and you're going yeah. holy moly this is what i am here for yeah this is the essence of everything i do in life everything mm. couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> It's true, but yeah. in saying that, you what know? are those things that stress you? What, what, um, when you get the overwhelm? Yeah, I, 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 that? I, that's the first thing. I try to avoid that word stress. I okay. don't even, I get it out of my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Things are full. They're never stressful. They're always full. Oh, well, that's good. And, and productive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I try and mentally shift the way I think about things mm -hmm. and that, that chemistry, that makeup inside my mind and my body that will, it, that will essentially and ultimately create my actions and decisions. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing all, all the time. I'm thinking, well, no, it's only as hard as I, I make it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's, he's crying, he needs a, he's got shit in his pants. <laughs> She's got paint over her face. She's just about to touch the couch and the walls and the TV's blaring and this is that. And I've still got to get this email done by 4.59. I've got a couple of minutes left to send that before that goes out of the office. I've got a courier coming. You just go, you know what? It's never going to get easier if, if I let it become an issue, it becomes an issue. So you just choose to deal with the things that are priority. So mm -hmm. he's upset, so obviously he gets priority. The paint on the walls can wait, mm -hmm. the courier can wait, the emails can wait, 
So I'll just go to what I need to go to yeah. essentially. And um, that's why I'm also super passionate about meditation and mindfulness because things are buzzing by so fast. Mm -hmm. And they'll, as we said, they will never get slower. Yeah. It will never become less frantic. Misha and I are the type of people that want to, that have dreams and goals and we want to achieve and accomplish things. We love that feeling of challenge and fulfillment and, and, and creating things, um, especially in that health and wellness space. That's, that's where our passion lies. So if I want that, I've got to understand that it, it won't get any, get any less busy mm -hmm. or any less frantic. So I've got to learn internally to, for it to be productive and I want to be present at all times. Mm. Somebody write this down <laughs> and Stop. just tell me this on a daily basis. No, but it's true, isn't it? It's like we, we always step outside of an experience and go, oh, that was, oh, but why can't we in that moment have that exact sensation of the calm, the feel and the mm. calm. And yep. so we can, we can step away from it and say, no, it didn't go by fast. It went by as, as it needed to. Mm -hmm. It was exactly how it needed to be. Yeah. Mm. And are you and Misha on the same page with that? Because <laughs> you guys are so cute. We are so in love. Thank you. You're we an angel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we differ slightly and I'm a little bit more, I guess, um, affected by anxiety and stress. So I need to work harder to calm all of that. Right. So I find myself, you know, I've got the 20 minutes at the start of the day, the 20 minutes at the end of the day, out in my quiet spot, zen, no talking, you know. Okay, can I just logistically ask how that actually happens? Because if I was to step away for 20 minutes yeah. in my home, there's no way. Like I would be interrupted <laughs> in the first five seconds. So Misha knows I like that 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is first thing, um, just for example, the morning routine, I'll get up, get Dominic, um, give him his first breastfeed, um, take him downstairs with me in the rocker. Misha will slowly be starting to wake up. And Misha and Violet sort of get up at the same time, then they'll come downstairs. So Misha is with the two mm -hmm. and I'll have my coffee out on the balcony and that's my 20 minutes. Amazing. So okay. I, I try and structure that as much as possible every day. If I'm traveling, for example, and I'm in a hotel and I've got Dominic with me and Violet's in Sydney with um, Misha, I will the same. I'll feed him. I'll put him in his rocker. He's happy. He's fed. He's full. Mm -hmm. He's had his nappy changed. He's got some toys. And I will still sit in the room and meditate. And he's just sitting there with me happy. Yeah. You know, that makes me happy. That that makes for the meditation even have you know a beautiful feeling if i need to get that time um and i don't have misha's help i will still do it inside i'll do just more of an active meditation mm -hmm. so it's it's you know i prefer quiet and stillness and hearing all the nice noises around mm -hmm. but if i've got to do it when the kids are there it's not the end of the world you know i can still actively be where be aware of my breath <sighs> and the grounding of my muscles and you know my body parts on the couch and I'm I'm there with Violet and Dominic and you know I can still do something um wow something <laughs> you gotta come to my house and teach me how to do that it's just it my just, kids would be like <laughs> <laughs> well I think boys are also a lot different to girls and I think we've been pretty lucky with Violet you know she's a very placid child and she is you know she's been great because she can just sit with us or, you know, amazing. She's, yeah. she's, 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 oh, she has her energy burst. Don't get me wrong. After a smoothie, she's like off flying off the walls, <laughs> but nine times out of 10, she's pretty placid. So, okay. So the key is a placid child and an awesome husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And just making the time for you yeah. and not feeling guilty for that and switching off. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm doing a whole bunch of things throughout the week to keep my body in check. I call these little moments like resetting my body. Mm -hmm. So if Violet and Dominic are napping at the same time, that's like, oh my God, 60 minutes, oh, yeah. what to do with myself? <laughs> do you get that yeah, too? Yeah, like, yeah. And then you I just feel like cleaning things. If, yes, like, oh. or don't do the cleaning. Okay. This is my do the thing. Meditating. Do either the meditating or take a nap or mm -hmm. just run the bath or yep. have that cup of tea on the balcony or do something for you before the chores, before the list of to-do things, because once you do, then when you get back to the list of to-do things, you're just like in 
in the mode and you're actually more productive. That's what I keep saying to Misha. You've got to train the brain to be still, the mind to be still, so that when it is on, it's like our body. Mm-hmm. We go to the gym, we belt ourselves, we train our body, we eat the right food. We, it's got to be the same. The same formula has to follow for the mind. And yeah. even when we're sleeping, we're still subconsciously thinking about something. Mm-hmm. We're still dreaming. We're still ticking over. Yeah. So when does, it, when does our brain get a space to stop? True. Never. Never. Yeah. Unless we allow that time. Yeah. Mm. You did Miss Universe Australia. You won Miss Universe Australia yeah. in 2009. <laughs> uh-huh. First of all, is it everything we think it is? Beauty pageant? What do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> Just a whole bunch of beautiful girls. Yep. That's, well, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal experience. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have that stereotype attached of, you know, where throwing bashing cans of hairspray on each other and cutting ponytails and doing all sorts of stuff. No, some of my closest friends have been from that competition. And it's beautiful because you've got a lot of determined, passionate women in the same room, in the same space, even though it is a competition. So essentially there is that competitive force, that competitive nature. But you're sharing amazing conversation and stories and I remember the actual the Miss Universe comp the world one in the Bahamas Mm -hmm. I spent three weeks a different morning every day with a new country on the breakfast table right so one day I was with Miss Colombia I'd hear hear about her stories next day I was with Jamaica the next day I'm with Canada the next day I've got you know like it was just insane and to have that so early on in my career Mm -hmm. of you know media commitments, shooting schedules, what it actually means to live a full life in the media. It's a lot of personal growth as well. You've really got to delve into what you want as a person and what you want to accomplish and achieve. And even though you don't know, you don't, no one knows all the answers. They don't know everything about what they want to do. We're always evolving, but it is a good starting point. Mm -hmm. And it was the perfect place to start that train of thought of who am I as a person? Mm -hmm what am I here for? Yeah. You know, what's, what is the, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> Cause how old were you when, when you were in this? Oh, I think I was 21 when I did oh the comp. God. That's really young. Yeah. And very insightful to be having all of those thoughts at mm. 21. Well, I think because you put in that position of, you know, you go into these personal interviews with 12 judges from all around the world that mm. have got different backgrounds and, and makeups and um, different experiences. Um, and, they ask you these things and they ponder these questions and they and you, they get your brain thinking about if you were given x what would you do right. so you just you start thinking yeah, straight away okay. got it you know so it's not just the the awkward on stage question <laughs> it's not just the bikinis yeah that's a part of it of mm-hmm. course and taking care of your body and nurturing all the nutrition mm-hmm. inside of your body performing your best that mental yeah. stimulation and activation was paramount did that give you your platform to then go on and then be ambassador for Maya and get... Yeah, so I've... um, I started, I guess, modelling when I was 15. I was um, approached in the Townsville airport where I grew up by a model scout. Wow. And he said, I've got a local modelling competition. Can you... Would you want to enter? That is like the old school way of how it used to be. Yeah, exactly. Before Instagram and social media. Yeah. Yeah. And I, my dream, my goals were to compete at the Olympic Games. I was super serious about athletics and 200 meters and long jump were my event. Really? So I really wanted to continue training and uh, pursue that goal. And then this this guy approached me. I was super, so I knew a lot about body mechanics and and training and and fuel for performance. So I had that background. Mm -hmm. But then when this guy approached me, I was like modeling, like, you mean high heels and makeup and stuff? And you'd never thought it never crossed your mind? Never crossed Didn't my mind. Didn't think of you, uh, yourself no, in that way? No. And then really? mum and I decided to enter the competition and ran around and brought outfits. I just had sort of leggings and gym clothes and things. And we brought my first pair of high heels and got all of that together. And I was very much a tomboy. Um, very, very much. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I entered the comp and I was lucky enough to win that competition. And I remember that that night, the agency that I got a contract with in Brisbane come up to me and said, well, congratulations. Do you want to, do you want to move to Brizzy now and, um, you know, start building a portfolio and, 
and learn how to walk on a runway properly and, and shoot and, and conduct, be involved in a photo shoot. And I was like, I don't know, <laughs> I guess so. We went with it. Mm-hmm. We took every day as a new experience. Mm-hmm. And then before I knew it, I was traveling to different countries, New Zealand, Germany, Singapore, London, I lived in New York for a year, like just building my book and working. And that's how the modeling sort of side of things started. Then I entered the, the Miss Universe competition. Mm-hmm. And then I guess that was the launch pad into the media. Yeah. So it was that modeling fashion background, um, then the then the comp and then then the, everything with Channel 7 and Maya. So. And you met Mishi, your lovely husband, on the, the set of Dancing with the Stars because yes. you were Dancing with the Stars and he was one of the professional dancers Exactly, there. yeah. And you guys were teamed up together. Yeah. And how did, what's the story? Yeah. How that, did that, how, that all happen? Well, we, we, we kind of can put two and two together, can't we? <laughs> A lot of dancing, <laughs> close clothes. Exactly. Well, we had, it was quite funny because I remember standing in that, uh, hallway just about to enter that rehearsal room for the first time and I was shaking like a leaf because when Channel 7 asked me to do the show I had never danced I'd thrown a touch football I had long jump sprints you know mm-hmm. never anything graceful or whatever <laughs> and I you know done a bit of modeling but modeling is so different modeling is all about shapes and arching and yeah. angular movements with the body and weight back heel first dancing is so different it's like shoulders down posture core engaged pelvic uh, floor turned on and switched in ball of the foot first weight forward Mm -hmm. so it was like a complete shift in i've gone from like lanky to (laughs) to like elegance just different posture and different body position and i've walked in and uh i just remember looking at him going wow you've got to be gay because <laughs> he, he was so attractive and yeah, i just thought yeah, yeah you know all the manicured and everything was like in place and the v was the, and the perfect v and, yeah and all of the shoes and the outfit was just perfect and i've gone and i hear my like a bouncy pony and flyaways <laughs> and i was like oh my god i had never just seen a man like that so, so polished yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um I'm like, hi i'm rachel <laughs> it's like i'm 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 michael you know like really refined and it was so funny and then um we had that first rehearsal and he i remember him thinking we've got a lot of work to do mm-hmm. yep. yep but after that we went down to the cafe downstairs and talked for about four hours until they were sweeping us out and did you discover he wasn't gay in that moment? It, yep, in yes, in that in that tea and coffee sitting, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, and then I remember, I think three or four weeks after, I had some of my stuff at his place. We had, yeah, it was pretty quick. Wow. I think when we we, we just knew and we just were spending seven days a week together, yeah. ten hours a day. We'd be up, we'd be eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. Yep. We'd be talking about our routines, our choreography, our just the personal growth that I was doing through yep. this experience was just mind boggling. Like having to construct, perform, create, and, and just do a perform a routine live on air in a matter of seven days in an arena that you were unfamiliar with I was just going, just got to do it. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. I've just got to do it, yeah. you know? And that, there's so much growth in that. Mm. I'm a big believer of putting yourself in those really challenging environments mm-hmm. so that you do you do get that incredible growth. Yeah. If we stay in a safe bubble all the time and there's just nothing you happens, you just, you mm-hmm. just, you don't evolve. So mm-hmm. I love, that's why I did the show and that's why I loved it so much. And then three weeks later, pretty much, yeah, had stuff there and then he asked me to marry him six months later so it was really quick wow <laughs> you do really practice what you preach you are about this healthy lifestyle because i think there's so much information out there mm-hmm. and then we are constantly bombarded with yeah you know body image and abs and how much we're not doing and what we should be mm. doing and how to do it and where to start and blah, blah, blah. it's like yeah. it's overwhelming for mm. just the average person to 
you know, and especially being a mum, being yeah. a working mum, and yeah. how do you find the time? And uh, it's uh, nonstop. It's nonstop, and mm. it's hard to figure it out. What would you say for the average person? There's two things. The first one is having more time to do the things that you love. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with my program, it's not hour long workouts. They're short, they're sharp, they're quick, they're effective. We've been able to see what women like and what they don't like in yeah. their workouts and what gets those best results. So I know that women don't want to be working out for hours. They mm -hmm. want short, sharp, effective workouts mm -hmm. that will get the results, challenge them and push them yeah. and make them feel incredible. Get that endorphin rush. And this is all online, hey? Yeah, all yep. online. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Bodybyfinch.com. So everything is, is there for you in your planner structured from Monday through to Sunday. Meals on the table in under 30 minutes. All your meditations going through what it is, how to do it, breathing techniques. Every week I'm checking in with the girls talking about little tips, whether it's you know my bulletproof recipe or confidence tips or motivation tips or whether it's something to do with skin or beauty or fashion. Mm -hmm. Like I love throwing in things all the time that I know and love yep. to be able to give back. Mm -hmm. So, but time is the biggest thing. Mm. So the program is designed to allow you to, to, to get this done, to do those things, but so that you, then you can have more time doing the things you love. And the other thing is allowing it to be the best version of you. Yeah. So that is the whole, that is what ultimately we want. Mm -hmm. I want to be a fun mum. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a boring, shitty mum. Mm -hmm. I want to be an awesome wife. I want to be a good friend. I want to be a great daughter, mm -hmm. a lovely sister. You know, I want to have all those good 100% Rachel mm -hmm. moments. Um, so that's what I wanted to try and give back to the people doing yeah. my program. I really love it. <laughs> and we can wear your, your active wear yes! while we do it. <laughs> can exciting. we look like you if we put it on? Your do our legs, legs like... <laughs> Grow? <laughs> well, there's this one of my favourite ones. I've got uh, leggings attached to the to the tight. Oh. Uh, sorry, not leggings attached to the tight because tight and leggings the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, so there's a leg warmer oh. attached to the tight. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of feedback with that suck in, mm -hmm, awesome mm -hmm. tight. Yes. Fabric. Good fabrication is key. Flattening. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> Especially after two bugs. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, so one of my favorite tights, uh, there's a, a leg warm on the bottom half with a little uh, stirrup oh, holder cool. on the bottom. So, <gasps> so you can be ballerinas. Exactly. I love it. I love <laughs> so it. there is a little dance inspiration with the yeah. range and it doesn't overpower the range, but it definitely lends itself to some, you know, little beautiful key features that are dance inspired. So twist knotted detailing, a lot of crisscross patterns happening, um, mesh, you know, fabrication intertwined with other different textured uh, materials that really just work together. and. It's just been an absolute dream creating yeah. a range that I love to work out in and I love to wear, but um, you know, trying to get as much feedback from different women doing my program and um, you know, every time we're in the boardroom making a decision for the range, we've got 15 women, all different shapes and sizes, right. all different ages, all different walks of life, sitting there saying, does everyone want to wear this top? Right. Why? Uh -huh. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know, we've all gone through that. And mm -hmm. I think that's been a really inspiring process as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so great. Everything just ties in so perfectly. How would you define happiness? I think happiness is when you are 100% content in any given moment. When you're not searching for anything more. Yeah. You're not dwelling on the past. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking. You're not... You're just completely enjoying what is what is now. Mm -hmm. I think that's when you're truly happy because if you're always if you're searching for something, whether it's a material possession or you know a, a, a level of achievement in something or a goal or whatever it is, you're going to be still searching and you're not going to feel fulfillment. Mm -hmm. If you're dwelling on oh I could have been, I wish. Yeah. Maybe that could have come of that or yep. let's go back to that. Mm -hmm. You're still longing for something. But if you are just always in that moment and making those best decisions based upon your current feeling, mm. what well, that's, yeah, that's pretty happy. And it's that, that kind of that balance of being content, mm. but also because you're a driven, ambitious person who wants things for your life. Mm. You've got to be content, but you've also got to 
have that drive and that push well, that's, towards that's the a next thing. thing and as I well. think that's where that beautiful B word comes into play, balance. And it's yes. knowing when to go, I'm in the moment, but oh, where was that quote I read the other day? Oh, maybe just even, for example, one that I posted this morning, be over prepared and then go with the flow. Get your shit done. Yeah. Do what you need to do. Yeah. And plan, prepare, write your schedules. I'm a schedule freak. I'm Same. a list freak. Same. I'm on my, the phone to my agent nonstop. What have we got? I've told you, Rach. <laughs> Tell me again. <laughs> Put it in a spreadsheet. <laughs> Spreadsheets maybe, but diary definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get, let me know. Yeah. I, I need to. Yeah, I need to know. It. Yeah. But when I've done the work, it's all about, I guess, working productively, mm-hmm. not, not. Um, you know, over extended periods of time. So when I'm working, I'm really working. And when I'm present, I'm really present. So it's just balancing that time according to how I feel. That's great. Sometimes I'll know I need to prepare Mm -hmm. and I need to get my butt into gear planning something, but I just need a nap. (laughs) (laughs) So I'll usually take the nap. Mm -hmm. I'll usually take the nap. Yeah. um, Believe it or not. In your frame of mind. Then I'm more productive. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I need to take more naps. Isn't it? This is is pretty common. (laughs) Probably not now. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay, here's my last question. Yeah. And someone asked me this the other day, so I'm going to ask you. (laughs) Yeah. And it made me cry. So hopefully you don't cry. Um, Because normally normally the question is, what would would you say to your 15-year-old self? But Mm. I'm going to reverse it and say, what would your 15-year-old self say to your current self oh my goodness that is such a good question we all have experiences when we're younger especially with our parents and you know being brats and being annoying and having um you know being a little bit of annoying child an annoying child you know speaking to my mum in Mm -hmm. bad ways Mm -hmm. for example i would tell myself now you know I wouldn't say why why were you like that, but I would say, you know, give your mum a hug. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's really it's strong, isn't it? It's a good mm. question. I know, I was a complete mess. I couldn't even hardly answer it. <laughs> I know. Give mum a hug. Yeah. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh. Yeah. Because mums deserve their hugs, especially from their 15 year old bloody daughters. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. it's good, it's, it's good. Happened to it's, me. I love now this. <laughs> but wouldn't you say, wouldn't you say, of course, mum, of course, but wouldn't you say, like, I feel like you, as a so if I was a 15 year old girl and I and I met you, I yeah. would just think oh, she's she's such a role model. <laughs> she's such a good person to have. I think look our, par- up to. our parents did the best that they can, right? Yeah. They made the best decisions with what they had, and Mum was there like every time I had something on. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like I I could have treated her better. So yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did you ask me that? <laughs> no. I know, it's really heavy. It was heavy, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a good one. But it's so nice to think about. It is it's really so good nice to, think, to about. think about. Um Yeah, they did the best that they could. And you change when you get older. Yeah. You know, like I I do things now with Violet and Dominic that might not 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 uh, necessarily have happened that I had, you know, that I had when I was younger. Um, and, you know, I, I th- sometimes I go, oh, why wasn't, why didn't that happen to me? Why did I have sugar? Why did I, whatever it was, right? why was I allowed to do that? I wouldn't do that as a parent. Who am I to judge yeah. that my mum did that for me or my dad did that for me? Because that's the best decision yeah. that they come up with. Mm-hmm. And they were doing it out of love. Yeah. And you turned out just great. <laughs> they did a good job. Oh, they that's a good, a good one. Job. Mm. Rach. Thank you. We'll end there. <laughs> we'll just, we'll oh, great. Just 
<laughs> no, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for That's coming so and sharing tea with me and Thank sharing you. your heart and story. I don't think I need a green tea anymore. I need a chamomile. <laughs> we need a nap. <laughs> I need something. <laughs> I need some mascara. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.